Hello everyone, this is Crota giving you a game between Unix and Nurtio. Game 2 taking place on Shakuro's Plateau. Unix spawning as the Yellow Terran on the left side of the map at what I'll call the 8 o'clock position. Meanwhile, Nurtio spawning as the Blue Zerg here at what I'll call the 4 or 5 o'clock position. Both players spawning on the south side and this should make for a very very interesting game this is let's see which version of the map it is there is no backdoor rock entrance so i believe this is the standard blizzard version of the map right now version 1.5 sometimes mlg tsl esl ic ic cup and um, some of the other tournaments do remake the map and sometimes there's a little bit of differences not very much that i can see and sometimes there's no differences at all so um, I'm never able to 100% say whether or not it is a it is the certified Blizzard version of the map, unless it is actually the certified Blizzard version of the map when I try to load the replay. Um, I'll always try to make that distinction for you guys. Anyways, in getting into the game, Shakura's Plateau um, always has a cross spawn, so I'm expecting Nurchio to open up with a low ground hatchery. If he opens up with that low ground hatchery, he shouldn't have a problem trying to defend it, um, as the Overlord is going to come in and be able to get a lot of good scouting information and sight. The key thing that it wants to look for is to see whether there's going to be uh, refineries down here. If there's no refineries, it needs to then check if there is a command center being built here or here if there is no command center being built then he knows that there's going to be an obvious early aggression of marines you can see now a barracks a second barracks being built there and now the jig is up nurtio knowing that a second racks over here being hidden and unix unfortunately um, building that barracks in plain sight for that overlord that is going to be a little bit of an issue over there i believe um yeah unix was able to see that overlord i'm not 100 percent sure but if he wasn't, at least he knows now that where his opponent has in fact spawned. SCV now wandering around and it looks like the drone wants to see if the SCV is there. And he does see that one SCV. The SCV needs to get out of there. Will not be able to build a bunker. I've often seen bunkers being built along this side here. Just outside of sight range of that building hatchery. And then that causes a lot of problems. Hatchery nearing completion as well as we are now getting marines to come out and now oh building a barracks onto the low ground here so this is going to rally straight into his, his opponent's base and much more quickly this is a nice use of the fact that these destructible rocks have been removed so unix changing up the strategy and hoping to be able to get on a lot of early aggression these marines now no longer have to walk nearly as far and it is this is also a fairly safe expansion but with one one marine and one scv and a spine crawler already being built on that front door this is going to be very difficult for unix to try to bust through especially if zerglings are in production a queen is being trained so that queen um, obviously with spawn larva able to train up a lot of units even off of one hatchery you can see the scv now down over here are we going to get a second spine crawler Mer drones now coming off the mineral line as both sides are battling out that drone does take a, a fair amount of damage one drone is down and now there are scvs as well and those scvs quickly getting destroyed there as they're now trying to run along that backside a marine also destroyed in that engagement as a bunker now being placed down it has to be very careful as there's enough room to actually get flanked here so that's kind of a bad positioning as the marines need to be very very careful the marines now just getting trapped in that corner and unix's early aggression rush not gonna pay off at all the queen and the queen more than enough to handle it with one or two zerglings at her side and now the scv is getting get, gonna get taken down as well as unix most likely will be canceling that bunker there it goes Canceling the bunker and now the spine crawler rooting itself here in this position and will be able to fend off an even larger number of units. So now um, Nurchio having a very significant economic advantage by being able to mine off of 16 mineral patches. Meanwhile, Unix opting to open up with his own expansion as well, and it looks as though is that rebuild is that a landing of barracks or is that a production of a barracks? It looks like yeah, it's going to be landing of a barracks here, and then perhaps putting a supply depot here, making it very difficult for units to be able to um, squeeze through. Uh, many of those um, many of those marines are just going or zerglings will just fall trying to get through there. As we are now going to have a three racks front door, so that is a very durable front door. Um, Banelings not going to be able to take down all too easily as both players are now just transitioning so nurchio did a good job um fending off that attack 
And now he, he's trying to buy himself time. He's buying himself time in order to mine out much, much more effectively. At 25 drones, he does have a significant economic advantage. And especially since he's mining off of 16 mineral patches as opposed to just eight. So um, no diminishing returns over here at this set of mineral patches. The problem right now is when is Nurtio going to stop um, uh, power droning and then start building up a large enough army to put pressure for making and make Unix pay for an unsuccessful front door. And oh, look at this Zergling just simply running by. And Unix is just completely, completely disgusted by that as those Zerglings were just able to just come in. And yeah, that that's just, uh, you never like to see that happen unless you're a Zerg player and you're like, yeah, I'd love to see that happen. As the Zerglings now taking down multiple SCVs, fighting around, the Zerglings being very, very smart to go after the SCVs as opposed to the Marines. More, if fighting against those Marines would have taken even more damage. And now Unix even more behind in, in this battle. So Nurtio has to love the position that he's currently in now. I think there is, there may be enough room. Is there still enough room here? Unix should probably try to test this front door with his own Marines. I'm actually not 100% sure if there's enough room um, right in that position there for units to be able to squeeze through. We are now opting into a tech lab and then another factory without a tech lab. So we may be getting some Hellion play. Hellion play, blue flame research does work out very, very well, but we are now going into a Roach Warren as well, and now also teching the Tier 2. So a quick tech to Tier 2, expanding at the same time when his opponent is down, and Unix needs to pull a miracle out of somewhere. He can try to do something gutsy, um, something a little bit more dangerous. He can't play it safe. Playing it safe will just make um, you further and further behind unless Nurcio makes a mistake of some... Uh, he does not know how this wall is made. Okay, there you go. <laughs> finally, I'm getting this. Um, how, and finally, being able to completely um, make that wall. It does take three barracks completely and in order to wall off this front door. And now Roaches, on the other hand, will just be able to walk up that ramp and and start dealing damage towards that rack. So I know, <laughs> I attack to brood lord. <laughs> All right, so Nurcio and Unix both having a little bit of fun at this stage as this game is now continuing. We are going into the um, Hellions, and the Blue Flame research is underway. So um, I still do not... Is, do we see a starport? No, another factory coming in. So I'm not sure how those Hellions um, plan on getting into the base, but it looks like it is going to be um, a Hellion. Blue Flames trying to deal damage towards drones. We do see that there are multiple, multiple bases that we can drop in and drones at all of them. So we, Nurcio is spread rather thin. And if he and if he does get attacked, that's going to be a very, very bad sign as Zergi not just getting toasted there and now trying to make their way out. So yeah, a little bit of the animation issue because I'm running off of one hard drive. Slight lag in that in, in that particular instance. Hellions now making their way over and now looking to go straight into the main base here. And it looks as though this queen going to take a lot of damage and now Roach is trying to come out as well the Roaches do, do move very very quickly and getting some damage onto some of those um, those creep tumors as well and now trying to finish off that last queen and that queen taking so much splash damage but mass Roaches able to engage and now turn around and get some damage onto those Hellions the Hellions looking to try to perhaps run up that ramp is it going to be able to get enough damage it looks like one Roach is going to come over there and snipe down the lower hit point Hellion and that blue flame, even though it looked like it did attack multiple drones, only really had the animation on one, and that just was a sad, sad day. Roach is completely able to demolish that attack force, but now we are taking in the mass Thors. So triple Thors now being trained. Um, rather curious maneuver. Uh, triple Thor is usually not a standard strategy by any mean, and roaches are normally able to be massed out so easily that those roaches are able to shut down Thor's. A spire now coming in, and it looks like Nurtio's talk of going into a Broodlords may not have been a joke at all. So we are getting the Hive Tech and the Spire. Corruptors could be coming out um, do we have enough gas is the serious question at this point in time. Nurcio is mining off of six extractors. So six gas play does mean that he will be able to have a very strong gas economy. And perhaps it's going to be Zergling Broodlord. Zergling Broodlord is capable of dealing a lot of damage. The problem is that we are now going into double starport by Unix. I vote for Kaz and TT Cuff. <laughs> 
All right, so both of them are just uh, talking and, and having fun, I guess. So, um, Unix uh, you know, sitting over here, a couple, um, a couple of Thors, but Zerg and Balance can't be can't beat. All right, Roaches and Infestors now. Infestors getting a lot of energy now, so it's going to be two fungal growths off of these roaches. That fungal growth is going to be very, very important as overlords should probably be starting to spawn some creep. We are getting some creep tumors down over here, but Nurtio needs to reestablish this creep highway. Infestor is moving on. Creep is are very, very deadly as, oh, what was this? Um, mass contamination. So um, I, if you've never seen the mass overseer strategy, the mass overseer strategy is designed to just completely shut down your opponent from being able to build anything. Overseers obviously do not take any food, so they are essentially a food-free unit. And I have actually seen mass overseers useful once or twice. The movement speed upgrade is on those units there. And now trying to get one more round, unable to do so. And now those Vikings are trying to shoot and scoot. The Vikings are getting a lot of damage. And Nurtio is like, why are you killing my overseers? That's not very nice. As the an overseer trying to run away, the Vikings still getting off a decent amount of attack there. The Viking not quite able to shoot and move and attack at the same time. But with that long cooldown, able to get a decent amount of damage. And Unix says, I shoot them because they bleed. Alright, so if you guys don't like banter and talk, um, don't, walk, oh, don't watch the game between Unix and Nurtio. Roaches and Corruptors now are over here. There are a lot of Infestors as well, so those Infestors can spot a lot of, spawn a lot of Infested Terrans. So Infested Terrans may be an issue here as the Zerglings now trying to put pressure on that front door. There are Corruptors in the air and now an over Marine now trying to fight back but this front door going to fall in just seconds. But Siege Tanks now blasting away and getting a lot of damage in. And now Infested Terrans gonna be spawning right straight up onto the group of Siege Tanks there as both sides are battling it out. But still the Zerg player not quite sure how he's able to sir actually just and just sacrificing all of his units and if Nurtio is not careful he may actually lose this game he's he's playing kind of haphazardly this whole entire time he does have a much stronger economy but still when you are that far ahead of your opponent um i do not suggest you just um just suicide your units like that that is still a 1500 unit loss and now unix who's feeling fairly comfortable at this stage with thors and vikings may try to move out their siege tanks are also on the move as well as unix now tries to take this low ground expansion there are a lot of brood lords in the air now the brood lords do not have weapons upgrade at all the zerglings do have two zero upgrades so at two zero upgrades that is going to be very difficult to stop any of those zerglings and brood lords corruptors are still in the air looking for perhaps more vikings dealing more damage over here the zerglings just hiding off as the Broodlords are going to start coming in in just a moment. There are a f uh, There is a fleet of Vikings now battling it out against those Corruptors and the Broodlords no longer having... What are those What are those Broodlords or those Corruptors doing? Not 100% sure. The Broodlords are just continuing to come in as the Corruptors now going after those Vikings. The Zerglings are tying up those um, tying up those stores now. So the, however, the Missile Turret is going to get some damage in. So Broodlords continuing to battle it out and now with five broodlords and without an escort those broodlords now need to retreat there are a couple of corruptors but those vikings pretty much and were able to get a lot of damage and income the corruptors are we going to get a fungal growth there we go fungal growth getting a lot of damage onto those vikings perhaps another fungal growth could be coming in and those broodlords can re-engage in just a moment but there are two more vikings now coming in as well so this is a very very dangerous game 4600 versus 450 close game and there's the gg wow so um i don't think um, i don't think unix actually knew how not close that game was as Nurtio was running off of five bases and, and almost having a six base up and running. Um, perhaps if he lost all of these overlords here and got supply locked for quite some time. But yeah, uh, Unix losing a lot of, of units in that early, early portion of the game, not having a complete seal on that front door. And by not having a seal on that front door, Zerglings were able to get a lot of harassment and Nurtio knew that he could power drone very effectively and then a game of macro on shakuro's plateau never a very fun game at all uh, thanks for watching thanks for listening hope you guys enjoyed this 1v1 replay between unix and nurtio here on shakuro's plateau